President Trump is still fighting back and pushing forward against the mass electoral fraud that we witnessed last month. And I've actually heard that we're going to see some pretty cool stuff happen this week. And in case you haven't noticed, um, the MAGA hat is still on. But the point is that we need to be prepared for the fight going forward as well. Like we thought we won in 2016. We nominally had control of the entire federal government. And then we were betrayed by fake Republicans. And so to start to prepare for the 2022 midterms and solidify ourselves as an authentically conservative party with no room for imposters and no room for liars, we have to start at the tip of the iceberg of modern conservative rhetoric and explain why some of these extremely popular ideas and phrases are not conservative and or do not help us win at all and may in fact be propagated so as to distract us or seduce us into defeat. So we will go over five of those right now very important Christmas tie. Do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Can you hear me all right? Is the audio is good? No, no, I, I just don't want to inconvenience you like I did last time. Accidentally. People in the comments be like, it's time to fight back against tyranny. But then you have to use the emergency backup audio from the camera one time. And they're like, well, no, it's hard to listen because the audio is not as clear as it is usually. I'm kidding. Kidding. We love the comments, don't we, folks? Sometimes. But anyways, we'll just dive right into these because I'm sure that you've heard them all before or at least variations of them before. And I do believe that we need to abandon these things in order to be successful as a movement. And some of them are more significant than others in terms of their implications. But I still hear all of these within the volume of mainstream conservative discussion quite often. So I'm here to be like, um, actually, <laughs> hopefully get us on the right track a little bit, wake us up a little bit. So that being said, the first one we have is... <laughs> Let me tell you something. Just wait until these snowflakes get into the real world and they'll see. No one's going to put up with their safe space gender theory nonsense, but the reality is that the real world is now just as woke. I'll give you a recent example. Jordan Peterson announces the sequel to his incredibly popular 12 Rules for Life. The sequel is titled Beyond Order, and it is being published by Penguin Random House, which is one of the largest and most reputable publishers in the world. So in response to this, the staff members at Penguin Random House literally threw a temper tantrum to the upper levels of the company. They were literally crying about the decision to publish Jordan Peterson, who is a completely reasonable guy, someone who's not even explicitly political, someone who was only adopted by the American conservative movement uh, because he's in favor of free speech. He doesn't like authoritarianism, etc. He's basically a classical liberal. So American conservatives were like, hey, you know, let's promote this guy. And then the left responded by crying and branding Peterson as a Nazi, as a fascist, etc. So given that they weren't able to contain themselves at their job, what do you think happened? Do you think the company said, listen here, snowflakes, this is the real world. And if you have a problem with that, you can pack your things and leave. Or maybe the fact that you threw a temper tantrum, an audacious temper tantrum at our decision to publish one of the most gifted and lucrative writers of our lifetime means that we should just fire you. No, no, the company responded by saying, oh my gosh, no, don't worry. We're going to provide you guys a space and a form to express your opinions. We totally support you guys. And they basically capitulated to the mob. Now, does this mean that companies shouldn't listen to their employees? No. It just means that progressivism, wokeism, is a cancer. And since conservatives like to say, well, no, corporations are just people, we need to understand that since the people in our country are infected by that, by extension, it means that our corporations are too. So what you think will be the real world smack in the libs in the face is actually just going to be you getting reported to HR and subsequently getting fired for misgendering somebody at the water cooler. And the reason that this is important to note is that it is a talking point that implies deferring on the part of conservatives to say, well, they'll just figure out once, we're, when, once we put them in the real world. That's essentially saying like, okay, well, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to call them out on their BS because someone else will do it 10 years from now and it will totally undo their programming and social conditioning and then they'll get a lifted truck and a Gadsden flag. That's just simply not the case. Think about that timeline. Think about when they would hypothetically be entering the real world. Like you're telling me that some high school, college student, maybe five years from now, they're in the real world. Okay, sure. Think about where we were five years ago. That's about the entire lifespan of the gender theory discussion in the mainstream, about five years. Where are we going to be if we don't take action for another five years? Because the trends would suggest that things are going to get even worse and that there's no such thing as the real world shocking them into reality. So it turns out that we actually have to be proactive and not just assume that people will eventually figure it out in the real world because when the left has total control over the real world and exiles people like us from that, there will be no reality strikes moment. There will be the cemented woke narrative and there will be hate speech penalties and you will get to pick one of those. Now, allow me to shamelessly transition into John Doyle, Holiday Gift Authority. Did you know that you can actually achieve a multiplier effect on your God-given rights by exercising them simultaneously? Like if you're wearing a shirt that indicates that you probably carry a firearm while also carrying a firearm, 
that will actually overstimulate the minds of those who wish to take your rights away and cause their brains to melt, drain out of their noses, thereby fertilizing the tree of liberty. So let's start with the basics. We the People Holsters make the highest quality, most customizable holsters for all of your pistols in the entire industry. They start at like 40 bucks, literally thousands of options, lots of epic prints for your holsters. The customization is incredible. You can adjust the cant and ride intention of your holster for your favorite pistol with your favorite print. So it's totally customizable to fit your body comfortably and look exactly how you want it to look. But you already knew that because if you watch this show and you like guns, that means you're smart. So you already knew that carrying a pistol and taking responsibility for your safety is the most important thing for you to do, especially now. And you already knew that We The People Holsters is the kingpin of high quality, customizable pistol holsters. But what you might not know is that it's also incredibly important to make our presence known within the culture. How do we avoid being kicked out of the discussion? By making ourselves heard. We do it with the MAGA hats and we can do it by wearing apparel that lets people know that we love our country and we love our guns and actually we won't take one without the other. And maybe it sounds weird, but imagine being a normal person, right? You don't listen to the news, you don't really follow politics, but every now and then you see someone with a pro second amendment hoodie or shirt. And now it's internalized in your brain that people like us exist and we're proud to show you that. And so now gun control debate comes up again. The media tries to make us sound like terrible fringe people. Then a lot of people will be like, no, no, wait a second. I just talked to a guy with an AR-15 hoodie on the other day when I was getting orange juice. They were perfectly normal, nice guy. The point is that the way that the left has been successful is by pushing their agenda in your face and saying, this is normal, accept this. And it's about time that we start doing the same thing because we are actually normal and this is our country. So head on over to wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. You get an extra $10 off your entire order. Every holster ships free, comes with a lifetime guarantee. They make great Christmas gifts. The clothing is epic. Nothing says high energy, like walking into a retail store with AR-15 Santa Claus on your hoodie. That is wethepeopleholsters.com slash Doyle. Use code Doyle for $10 off. Very epic. I am the CEO of Holiday Incentivized Mass Consumerism. But on that note, talking about guns, which are of course very epic, we have to get into the second one. And you might not agree with me on this, but just hear me out. And that is back the blue. Blue lives matter, all that rhetoric. So let me clarify up front. Of course, blue lives matter. Of course, police lives matter. Of course, the vast, vast majority of police officers are good people with a really tough job. But what scares me about this is that it seems that conservatives are developing this almost Pavlovian allegiance to the police as a response to the criminal activity of the left. And we need to be very careful because while police officers are generally good people, they also have a job. And when push comes to shove, the majority of them are just going to follow orders. And we have to remember that police officers exist as the enforcement, as the muscle for a system that hates people like us. I cannot tell you how many times I've been at a protest, the police show up, all the conservatives are cheering, oh yeah, blue lives matter, back to blue. And then the police start arresting the conservatives while letting the leftist mobs continue to do whatever they want. Because you have to understand that blue lives matter started as a response to black lives matter because black lives matter said, hey, police are racist and they're killing black people for no reason and we hate them. And so we said, no, 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 that's actually not true. Don't incite violence against police officers. Their lives matter. And that's all true. But the way I see conservatives starting to trust the police is starting to scare me because it's like, I seriously think that if they came to confiscate our automatic assault weapons, because remember, it's not going to be Joe Biden. That's not going to be Pete Buttigieg going door to door. That's going to be the police who are just following orders. And I seriously think that there's now going to be a lot of people who just hand over their guns to the police. Like, oh, I'll tell you what, officer, I really support what you're doing. You got a tough job. And hey, on the way out, take a look at my bumper sticker says blue lives matter and I support you. Like the point is that we need to remain skeptical of an entity that exists to serve authority, especially if that authority hates people like us. Obviously we still treat police with respect and we acknowledge that many of them are our friends and family, good people, but it's still important to recognize that we have to keep our guard up because a lot of people seem to have been brainwashed to a point where they'd be like, officer, I know that you have to go take my neighbor's AR-15 as well, but I will tell you that I'd take it as a personal insult if you didn't have sex with my wife right now because I support you. I back the blue. So again, we love our cops. We love law enforcement. We love law and order, but we're also keeping our guard up because we know the risks of failing to do so. But anyways, on to the next one. Everyone's favorite phrase with which to dunk on the libs, to own the libs, and that is facts don't care about your feelings. So obviously facts are important, the truth is important, but this phrase properly understood is basically just a way for people to pat themselves on the back. Like, hey, Hey, listen here, liberal. These are the facts. Oh, you don't like the facts. You can't handle the truth. Are you triggered? Are you gonna cry? I'm a genius and I have no emotions. All I care about is facts and I reject feelings. Are these indicative of me being autistic? Yep, but it's okay because I'm epic. Like that might make for viral right-wing content on YouTube, right? But for most people, that's not convincing. It's actually off-putting. And the reason for that is that people are not rational. People are big dumb, which means they don't know anything. But what they do know are things that they have experienced every day. 
They know their emotions, which is why emotional arguments are millions of times more effective than purely factual arguments. Does this mean that we just abandon facts and start crying uh, to, to get what we want like the left does? No. It means that we use facts to arrive at what is good and what is true, and then from there we construct emotional arguments with which people can sympathize and relate. It's not black and white at all. Your arguments need to use facts to appeal to emotions. I'll give you an example. Let's say, hypothetically, someone dies. Crazy, right? And they died because someone shot them with a gun. So the purely emotional response from the left is, well, people are dying with guns, so we need to get rid of guns to save lives. And then literally no one will ever die again, ever. We will have transcended death and officially conquered nature. And the typical conservative response would be, um, actually, if you look at the CDC data, it says that two thirds of gun deaths are suicides. And also the majority of mass shootings are committed in gun-free zones, which means that blah, 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 blah. I'm just a robot, right? And it's not effective. It hasn't been effective for the last several decades in which we've tried that style. So instead, to actually persuade people, the approach should be something to the effect of, oh, well, you know, how could you say that we need to confiscate guns when the average police response time in Detroit is 14 minutes? What if there's a single mother whose house gets broken into? Is she supposed to just call the police and hope for the best, etc.? That's a very basic explanation of the difference between the two styles of argument. But the point is that basically no one can sympathize with being a nerd about gun statistics, but they can sympathize with caring about the well-being of themselves and their family members. So the solution is to use the data to build arguments that are relatable to people and that are compelling to them emotionally, not just reading off bullet points about data and declaring yourself victor by sheer virtue of facts and logic. And that kind of gets into the next one, which is, um, it's not really a phrase, more of a mentality that I've noticed, and I'm sure many of you have as well. And that is, there is nothing conservative about being selfish. A lot of times I've noticed that there's this attitude that permeates throughout conservatism of, well, I'm going to have my guns and my freedom and whatever happens to anyone else is not my problem. All I care about is the absolute individual. And the problem with that is very simply that you cannot conserve America if you don't have America, if that makes sense. Like a country exists for a reason. We're living together for a reason. And that reason isn't just that we all want to occupy the same geography. Like the point of a country is to build bonds with your community and your neighbors, your family, friends, to have something in common, actually take interest in their well-being. There's nothing conservative about being like, I thank God every day for a country that gives my uncle the freedom to be hopelessly addicted to opiates. Like, do you get, you get what I'm saying? Like, obviously, a large element of conservatism is personal responsibility. You take care of yourself. You pull your own weight, of course. But an element of conservatism that's arguably even larger and more important is community. It's charity, helping people who need it. The left wants to make that the responsibility of the government because they want to feel like they're helping without actually having to help, but it's our job to actually help people. You can emphasize personal responsibility while still being concerned about the well-being of those in your community. And if you reject the latter to emphasize the ultimate individual with no friends, no family, but lots of guns and a subscription to black.com, God bless America, like then you're going to allow for the social fabric of this country to further deteriorate. And if that happens, when that happens, there's no chance for our country in the future because it won't even be a country at that point. It will just be a place for a bunch of people to dwell and wait to buy the next product. And that gets into our last one, which is that America's greatest enemy is socialism. The greatest threat to America is socialism. So I'm here to tell you humbly that America will never be a socialist country because what America will actually be if we don't reverse the course will be so much worse than socialist. Our problem isn't socialism. Our problem is that those with power hate us. That power is in government and that power is also in these transnational mega corporations. Like how is the government going to take over these businesses to implement socialism when these corporations are more powerful than the government and they've already bought the government off to a large extent? It isn't going to happen. What is going to happen is a continuation and an escalation of what we've seen basically for the last year, which is big business using the government to crush small business into the ground to transfer wealth from the pockets of middle class families into the pockets of those in Washington, those in the bureaucracy and the administrative state, and those running these corporations. And their success is largely contingent upon you being distracted not only by mass consumerism, by new products and brands, new superhero movies and video games, but also even within your political involvement, being distracted by this idea that, oh, well, socialism's coming. We have to memorize the entire free to choose lecture series. Like, no, no, we don't actually. I see no operative difference between standing in a bread line while state propaganda hangs over me and coats the walls of every building and standing in line at one of three grocery store chains left in the country telling myself that this is market competition and that I've made a choice as a rational consumer and then buying chemical food with money from my job that hasn't gone to, to paying off tens of thousands in debt from student loans and also predatory credit card loans. And then I go home, I watch television, I invest parts of myself into these Hollywood shows and movies, I worship celebrities, and I'm convinced that I am free because at least it's not exactly socialism. But in reality, it's probably worse than socialism because at least with socialism, you know you're not free. But with this, they're brainwashing and numbing you into thinking that you're free because you at least have the choice to partake in your own self-destruction, right? Like they've structured the society such that the easiest thing for you to do 
is to become an isolated, apathetic debt slave whose greatest purpose is working in a cubicle and whose greatest mental task, task of the mind, is thinking about what kind of dining set defines you as a person and who will be miserable in that life but confused as to why since they're ostensibly free, right? I don't want to live in that world. No one wants to live in that world. So we're staying sharp. We're staying high energy. We got big plans in general, but also on this channel specifically. Important stuff coming very soon. But in the meantime, if you care about this country, I would advise you to get very comfortable in this fight and with the knowledge that you will be doing this for the rest of your life. Because as the saying goes, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Except the baby boomers are kind of a lost cause. And we've lost a lot of ground. So it's going to be our time, our job instead. So very cool. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. We're building community, group activity. I declare now, when I snap my fingers, everyone will collectively leave the video a thumbs up. This will form bonds, trust me. I know what I'm doing, ready? Okay, at this point, everyone should have left a thumbs up on the video. I'm now going to snap my fingers again, at which point you will leave a comment on the video. If you cannot finish your comment by the time the activity has moved on, worry not. You can complete at your own pace. Cue it up, here we go. There we go, moving on. I'm going to snap my fingers again, at which point you will subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Keep in mind that if you've already done this step, this is your break. Very good, almost done, two more. I'm going to snap my fingers again, at which point you will. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, leave a comment. Wait a minute. Okay, never mind. I forgot the other stuff I was gonna tell you to do. I have failed. The group activity has failed. The community has dissolved. The age of man is gone. And we are going to be conquered by Chinese robots and robots that are Chinese. I blew it. I blew it. It's over. Show's over, folks. Christmas ties off. I messed up. Just kidding. I was going to try and bring it back. Like, just kidding. I'm actually optimistic. I didn't ruin it, but I ruined it. I did. I'll be honest. I ruined it. So thank you so much for watching. And may God bless America.